Hey, good afternoon, YouTube. I uh, just got something in the mail today. I don't want to open it up with everybody. Um, what you're looking at here is obviously a 50 cent penny roll. And as you can tell, I've got my wheat cent book out. I've only got five spots open. I got 1909 SVDB, 1909 S, 11S, 12S, and 14D. These are the only ones I need to fulfill my uh, my book. Um, and what I got here is um, I know that there's a specific coin in here um, that I've been looking at. And I went ahead and purchased this. This is not a, an unsearched roll. Um, well, it might be, but there's a coin that is right here on the top. And you can't see that very well. Um, I'll, I'll adjust the light a little bit later. But basically what you're seeing, let me see if I can adjust the light. So if you're looking at that, what you can see here is there is a 1909S. Now, the reason I'm doing this video, one, I purchased this coin, but if you look at that coin, look at what good shape it's in. And so that made me really, really happy. And obviously you can tell I got my gloves on. So I'm gonna be opening this roll from the other side. I don't know what's in this roll. Um, and so I wanna go ahead and share with everybody, but uh, just want kind of everybody to uh, to join in with me and see what we got here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that over to the side. I've got my little black felt down here. I apologize if it's dirty, but that's what happens when you look at coins. And again, it's here on the end, so I'm going to go to gently push those out of there. And I, again, I don't know what's in here. Um, I do know that there's going to be uh, some... Uh, lower lower mintage lower dates um, and there's that one now I'm going to set that right here and if you look at that coin um, you're going to see that it's in just fabulous shape can't tell if the coin's been cleaned it does not look like the coin has been cleaned but I'm going to go ahead and go through these first leaving that I'm going to set these off to the side leaving that here I'm going to go ahead and uh, move this light back down and I'm going to be going over these coins one by one and we'll kind of be talking about it and see if I can find anything in here. <clears throat> so the first coin we come across is a, oh, it's too small to see, you need to put that on the microscope. Looks like a 1936D, it is a 1936D. Uh, it's pretty worn, it's pretty flat, there's really not much there. Uh, the next one we have here is 1937. That coin is actually in fairly decent shape. I'm going to go ahead and try and uh, zoom in a little bit so we can look at these coins. So I think that's a little bit better. This will be a better viewpoint for everybody. So that's a 1937. That coin is a, it's pretty decent. It's got some good, good detail, so I'm going to go ahead and set that off to the side. Next coin is a 1956. I got plenty of those. Not even going to really pay attention to that one. I'm looking for uh, fillers for my book, and I'm looking for ones that are BU or better, or um, uh, AU or better. This is a 1920. It's pretty flat. Uh, it's got a good date. Um, that's nice and clear. Uh, it's pretty worn back on the back, so it's probably a VG coin. Not too bad, but uh, and again... Uh, anything uh, in the teens or 20s are really good. Another 1939. Go ahead and set that up there with the 1930s. We've got a 1954. Maybe you want to look at that one. Set that one off to the side. Got a 1948 um, Denver. Uh, Mark, it's not too bad. Got my first Indian scent. That is a 1900. It does have a little bit of damage on it. It's definitely worn. It's probably in... Uh, very good condition. Uh, I think I have 1900. I'll have to look at all my Indian scents. But again, these things are really cool to have. What I like to do with these, especially the ones that are pretty worn and low down, is as I run into friends at like the convenience store or the uh, gas station or things of that nature, I like to keep one of these in my pocket uh, every once in a while uh, with the uh, the attendant uh, helping me or with the cash register or something like that, I like to pull it out and give it to them and kind of just spread the interesting coins. These things, you, you, we see them all the time as collectors as we go through and we coin roll hunt and we find out these things, but this is not something a lot of the general public sees, so I like to kind of spread the joy and the wealth 
by sending those out. I actually have another wheat set. This is a 1902. This, I, this date I know I don't have. Uh, you can barely make out the L in Liberty, but the rest of it's pretty worn down. You can't see any detail in the feather. Uh, the back laurel wreath is pretty nice. Uh, you can't see anything in the top of the shield, but you can see information down below. I'm going to set that aside because that's definitely going to go to fill my uh, Indian scent album. Actually, there's a couple Indian scents in this one. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, this is a 1918. Again, let me see if I can try and clear that up a little bit so that I'm just not getting a very good color there. And I apologize, I'm not getting really good. So that's 1918. Uh, Philadelphia. Again, not too bad. I'm going to keep that up there again. I like to keep all the 20s and teens that I find especially if they're in good shape. That's 57, not too bad. Another Indian, this is an 1899. This has got some plunget damage here on the top. Uh, you can see there, that's got a pretty good little uh, place where it's been smashed. Uh, uh, Indian head is pretty wore down. There's a couple of major die gouges here. This will be another one that I hand off to somebody just to kind of, uh, again, spread the wealth and the joy about this. This one is a really nice looking coin. That's probably going to be 50s. And yeah, that's a 56D. Not too bad. It's a, it's a pretty good looking coin. Doesn't look to be cleaned. And yeah, there's no, no no marks on that one. So, but overall, not a bad coin. I'll go ahead and set that one off to the side. Next coin we're going to look at again, another nice condition. This is a 57. You see those kind of with the 50s. It's nice when you can find them in the... Uh, 30s and 40s in that condition, but that coin's pretty good shape. It's got a nice little luster there. So I'm gonna set that one over there with the other 50. And we have uh, a piece of metal. <laughs> yeah, that I can't tell. I think that's a 1900. That'll definitely be one I give to a kid. That's, you can't even tell that one. I may not even, I may just throw that in my copper pile. 1944, that was pretty worn down. I'll throw that over there. The one thing I don't like to do is those ones that have, I'll bring that back over here. The ones that have this green stuff on them, that usually happens from the PVC uh, that the coins were set in or just general decay. And I don't like to keep these next to the coins that are um, of value. I don't, I don't like to keep these together because this stuff leaches into the other coins. So if I find stuff like this, I'll throw those in my like donate pile. Uh, or my just my just regular copper pile of things I'm not going to keep, and uh, or just hold on to copper value. But uh, this one won't go back into this coin set just simply because uh, I don't want that stuff to spread to my other coins. We got a Steely. Uh, this one has seen better days. It's got some rust. That's going to be the same thing. I'm not going to put that um, in with the other ones. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, toss that into a a pile of my other beat up wheat sets. 1944. Nothing spectacular there. 1954, we have another pretty decent looking coin. 1944D, uh, it's got pretty good details in the back. You can see a little bit of red in that one. Overall, not too bad of a coin. I'm just gonna set that one up there. Again, this is, I'm not, I'm not looking for any of the 40s. My focus here is uh, teens and 20s. Uh, this is a 46. This is a 1928, and that's actually a pretty decent coin. Now, this one looks like it might have been cleaned at one point. You can see, I, mean, I think it's a 25. It is a 1925. It's a Philadelphia. Uh, if you look just at the general color of the coin, and you can see that it's kind of flat. You can see some areas where it's looks like it's been cleaned. You can see some down here, especially around the wreath. I think this coin has been cleaned. Uh, again, 25, um, it's within that range of the coins that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that one. Here we've got a 1936. Again, this has got some stuff on the side of it. I think it's fine. Um, not really uh, low date mintage. I think that one's whatever, but I'm going to go ahead and set that off to the side. 1930, uh, this has got a good date on it. Uh, again, I like to keep the, the teens and 20s, but I'll go ahead and keep that one. 1950, uh, not too bad. This is another 1925. This is a 25S. Now this one actually is in pretty good shape. Um, the date is really, really clear. 
and look for the mint mark on that and see if there's anything. Yeah, it's fine. No issues. I'm going to set that one up there. That's a good one to have. Got another wheat scent. Oh, <laughs> or Indian head scent. Now, this one clearly has been cleaned. Um, it's got a little hole drilled in there in the back. Um, this one almost looks like it's been overplated with something. Not quite sure what's going on. I'm going to set this one aside. I find these things kind of interesting to kind of get to the bottom of, you know, why is it the way it is and see what kind of happened. But this looks like one of those things that's been overplated with uh, kind of like a gold, whatever. But yeah, that's, it, it's not of any value. It's just a cool, cool coin. This one, again, this is definitely being cleaned. You can see the, the brush marks in there. You can see how it's clean on the, the flat areas. Uh, within the field. This is a 1902. Uh, you can see a little bit of the Liberty in there, but not a whole lot. Uh, but again, this coin has definitely been cleaned. You can see that. But all in all, I'm going to keep the coin just because it's a nice, uh, nice variety. Uh, 1935. Uh, 1935 is good. I have plenty of those. I'm going to set that off to the side. Again, this is the one right here. I'm going to put that there just because that is such a beautiful coin. We have a 1939. Now, 1939 is pretty clear. There's a little bit of good detail there. You can see the lines in the uh, wreath, the laurels there. Lettering is pretty good. That's a pretty decent coin. I'll have to look at that one against my book and see if that's a better one than I have for my 39. This is a 45. Not a big deal there. 37. Again, 37s will keep. Uh, I'm going to keep all the 30s. This is a 1893. This is pretty flat. You can't see anything in that one. There's quite a bit of corrosion in the back. Uh, this is going to be one of those we'll probably set aside. First thing I got to do is look and see if I have that year. If I do, uh, then it definitely will be probably uh, packaged and donated to another kid. If not, then I'll put it in my book just because I want to make sure that I collect those. It may even go in my type album. Um, 1895. Uh, 1895 is a year I do not believe that I have. Um, again, I'm fairly new to all of this, so I've been collecting for about 15 years, but only actively for about probably nine months of that. So uh, I'm going to keep these. Again, I want to put all those books together. Uh, it's pretty cool that I'm finding so many Indian scents. I know that when I purchased this, they didn't tell me that there was going to be that. Now, this is a 1955. Of course, we want to look and see if there's any doubling in the 55. Uh, you got to be careful with the 55 simply because there's so many counterfeits out there. There's some definite markers you need to look for. So when you're looking at the 1955, if you see anything really crazy, um, you can do a couple things like, first off, you're going to want to look at the face of Lincoln. You're going to want to look and see if he's smirking a little bit. Um, sometimes the 1955s, he has a little um, kind of uptick in his smile. There's other things that you can look at. Uh, look for the font. Um, especially in the one cent. The one cent usually has a little bit wider font on some of the counterfeits that I've seen. I think I've seen two of these. There's a couple good varieties or, or, uh, of the counterfeits online. And go check those out. But there's nothing special about that one. This is an 1897. Now, that's the reeds are in really good shape around the edge. Uh, down here at the bottom, they kind of flat out across the top. I think I have an 1887. Now, the thing with this one is I think there's, um, I don't know if it's 88 or it's the 87, but there's the 8 over 7 repunched date. Um, I don't really recall off the top of my head. There's no mint mark on this one, but uh, I'll have to look again. This, is, this will go with some of the other ones to see if I have something in that variety. Um, this one. We're looking at a 1939. Again, we have a bunch of those, so I'm going to set that off to the side up here. Another Indian head. This has been pretty rich with Indian heads. This is a, a decent coin. Again, pretty flat. There's no liberty. You can't see any detail in the feather. But again, what I want to be looking for is I want to be looking for those years. This is going to fill my, my Indian held album. We got an 1889. I know I have a few of those. This one's pretty beat up. Uh, this will go to one of my donates. Man, there's a lot of Indian head sense in this. So 1899, uh, coloration's decent. This coin's probably been cleaned. Uh, when you look at it, you can see there's some flat areas and then there's some really luster in the other ones. But 
this one's pretty wore down. I definitely have uh, the 89, so not a big deal. This is 1900. You can see there's a wipe across the top. Look like somebody wiped their finger across it. You can see there on the face. So this one would be marked as cleaned. Uh, it's in pretty decent shape. Uh, again, I think I have 1900. There's another one in here, so we'll look over that. Uh, 45. The thing I like about this is there's been a couple coins in this that have been cleaned, uh, but nothing like some of the, the, the packages that I've received lately where it's like 40 to 50% of the coins have been cleaned. It's kind of aggravating when you uh, when you look in and you find a coin roll where the coins have all been cleaned, especially if you're going to be purchasing them on uh, eBay or some other auction house. They quote unquote unsearched rolls. It's really aggravating because there's really no such thing anymore. You just got to make sure that when you do this, you have your expectations set right. 1937, we'll set that up there with the 30s. We got a 1901. Again, this one you can see a little bit of detail in the feathering, not a whole lot. Uh, there's nothing fancy here. Got some filigree on the back, but set that aside with those ones. This is a 1954. I don't have any business you should keep in that one. 1928, I'll set that upside. 1954. And then our last one, which is a 1917. Now, the one that I have in my book is definitely better than this one. Apologize, a little off camera. Uh, this one is not um, the best specimen, but I always keep the teens. This is something that I don't get rid of. Um, I always try to keep the teens. Now, what we've been waiting for is to get a really good look at this 1909. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to look at this and just go, you know, what a beautiful specimen, right? Uh, this is this does not appear to have been cleaned uh, simply because you have the good luster. Uh, I think this one go probably red brown. Uh, you can see good lettering in that. I'll probably put this on the scope here in a minute. And again, there's no VDB on the bottom. But when you look at the quality of this coin, I mean, just look at the coloration there. It's just a beautiful coin. And um, this one's going to go, again, this is going to go to fill my book. But just, I mean, I'm just absolutely flabbergasted by this one. I'm I'm almost debating not even putting this in my book simply because of how nice it is. I'll probably throw this in a coin holder and add this to my penny book, which is, I have a bunch of items in my penny book. And I'm going to switch the camera real quick, open this up a little bit. So I've got uh, different pennies. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably take this over and put that over here in my 1909. I have a 1909 VDB, 1909, um, but I'll probably put the uh, 1909S in this book and not keep it in my other one just because how nice it is. So I think I'm going to go ahead and package that one up. Now what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and put this under the scope and I'm going to show you some coloration. Let's see what we got here. Now this, uh, this scope is not the best one, and I apologize for using my phone, but I'm going to switch that across. And when you look at this, you're going to see that there is some just some really, really nice color. Um, there you're going to see the 1909S, and again, it's in really good shape. I'm really happy with this. Uh, when you look at the back, you're going to see nice lines there. Uh, the one scent is very, very, very clear. Uh, again, all the lines in there. This is just a great specimen. Again, at the bottom, there is no VDB, uh, which is a shame. Uh, this is the one I'm, I'm missing, you know, the holy grail of coins. But all in all, this is a great specimen, beautiful coin. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to open that and share that with you all. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe, uh, share these videos. And uh, if you have any requests, then please go ahead and hit me up and, and let me know. So take care of yourselves and uh, we'll chat soon. Thanks.